Good morning and welcome to worship at First Baptist Church of Verdon. Uh, today, if you want to turn in your bulletins with me, today, uh, right after worship, we're going to have a special business meeting. So after the, benedic after the benediction, if you're a church member, you want to st uh, stick around, please just uh, be seated and we'll, we'll have a quick uh, conference and then our quick business, very quick business meeting and then we'll be dismissed. Uh, we are going to vote on the church revitalization. Uh, six o'clock tonight. I, is the SWAT still meeting tonight? Oh, at your house. Okay. Uh, six o'clock tonight, then SWAT. Um, tomorrow night, Zoom Bible study and prayer at 6.30. And on Tuesday, the Parks Initiative is meeting out in the Pittman Hall, if you haven't been a part of that and would like to come see what's going on, you're welcome to attend. Uh, it does say that Pastor Marty will be in the office on Wednesday, but uh, he is uh, going to be in Michigan? Is that what Minnesota. you said? Minnesota. Wrong, wrong him. Um, so he'll not be in the office this week. He, um, he won't be back in town until Friday. So, uh, But Wednesday supper at 6 o'clock, uh, followed by our jam classes. Saturday is the Widow and Widower's Social Time at Pittman Hall, starting at 2 p.m. Uh, and also Saturday night is the Church Wiener Roast at the home of Jim, Jim and Linda Hattery. That starts at 5 o'clock. Uh, hot dogs will be provided, but bring your favorite potluck cookout food and your lawn chair. And probably chili. Oh, chili will be available. Okay. And uh, dress warm. Although we do have... We have a nice big bonfire going, so. Uh, and I will need to be start working on the November, I can't believe it, the November-December newsletter will be rolling around here soon. So uh, think of items that uh, you need to, we need, I need to make sure gets put in there. I know sometimes I just forget about those, like the ABW, things like that. So if you've got special things going on, please let me know about it. Um, also, the ABWs, Speaking of that, has has their boxes out? Um, yes, and start taking those. They are ten dollars per box to um, for the. That's what the shipping costs now. So, uh, if you'll pay your ten dollars when you get your box, that's what the uh, that's what the way the ladies would like to collect it that year, this year. And there's plenty more boxes, so no no worry about that. There's just a few there that are already assembled. Um, Saturday, October the 31st, uh, a Halloween trunk or treat is up on the square uh, from 5 to 6.15 p.m., followed by the American Legion Parade at 6.30. Because Halloween falls on a Tuesday, uh, that's not, that's not right, it was 31st, Tuesday, October, <laughs> I don't know what, it's Tuesday, October 31st. Uh, because Halloween falls on Tuesday, um, Wednesday, we're going to have our Halloween party the next night on, on Wednesday, November the 1st, here at the church. From 6 to 7 p.m., we're going to have the Jam Kids. As, as SWAT Kids may be here to help with, with the uh, Jam Kids. but um, And then from 7 to 8, with the SWAT Kids will, will be here to uh, have their part of the party. So... And Saturday, November the 4th, Lake Springfield Baptist Camp is ha hosting their annual dinner and silent auction fundraiser at Chatham Baptist Church at 5.30 p.m. There's more information out on the bulletin board in Pittman Hall. Uh, their guest speaker is Ricky Horton, uh, as you can see there. Um, you do need to RSVP. Uh, there is no cost to the, to the meal. You just come and... Uh, there will be a collection, a donation uh, uh, toward the camp, and this is a time that you can show your support for the for Lake Springfield Baptist Camp. So um, that that's on Saturday, November the fourth. Any other announcements before we go on to birthdays, or yeah? Now, Burton Country Christmas is December, uh, the Friday, December the 1st, Saturday, December the 2nd. Pittman Hall will be used uh, for eight to 10 vendors uh, out here. We've already got 
five or six out there so far. So if, if you know of vendors that want Pittman Hall, uh, please let them uh, tell them to get in touch with us. Uh, but we also have this year it'll be held at the KC Hall. The other half of it will be held at the KC Hall, um, not the Catholic Sacred Hearts Hall, but due to the fact that they are doing some. They've had some issues in their sanctuary, and so they they have to use their parish hall for, for mass. So, um, so we are using the KC Hall, which means we can have a whole lot more vendors if we need to. So, um, send them our way. Alicia and I are um, in charge of that, so please send them our way for that. Okay, happy birthday today to Loretta Lino, and happy birthday on Thursday, right? Friday. Friday. It is Friday. <laughs> Steve changed it on me. <laughs> so I had Thursday in the bulletin. So happy birthday on Friday to Lila. And it looks like she's celebrating today. So. Any other birthdays or anniversaries? Our call to worship this morning is give thanks for unknown blessings already on their way. If you would want to turn in your hymnals to number 82, our next song is, our first hymn is Victory in Jesus, let's stand as we sing it. Now we're going to have a world mission offering um, moment here.
Greetings from Saba Theological Seminary here in Katakinabalu, Malaysia. I'm Aaron Osterbrock. And I'm Valerie Osterbrock. And together with our five children, we are International Ministries Global Servants serving here in Katakinabalu, Saba, Malaysia. Aaron and I met at Gordon Conwell Theological Seminary. And before we even started dating, we both attended a mission night on the global church in China. And we said, how can we best serve your country? How can we best serve the church in your country? And they said, please come and train our pastors. And so we really felt God's call independently to theological education before we even got married. One of the things we love about serving with IM is the incarnational model of ministry that IM has. Uh, we love that we came here by invitation from STS, from the local church, uh, and we came to join what God has already been doing through them. Our goal in our ministry and in every one of our classes is not knowledge for the sake of knowledge. It's knowledge for the sake of relationship. We want to see people grow in their love for the Lord Jesus and their understanding of His Word so that when they leave here, they may go out and disciple others and equip them and help them grow in their love for Jesus and their love for His Word. Our students here at STS are minorities uh, in Malaysia, and many of them also come from impoverished backgrounds. At STS, we have students who are of Chinese Malaysian descent, who are Indian Malaysian, who are um, from the various 12 indigenous people groups uh, that are native uh, local to Sabah. We also have students from overseas, um, and I love that, and there are students from all different kinds of Christian backgrounds. Valerie and I are so grateful for our partners. You know, praying for us, writing to us, just amazing. Another thing we're grateful for is the World Mission Offering. It allows us to stay focused on the ministry at hand and the task at hand to equip and mentor and disciple future pastors and church leaders. We are so grateful for your partnership with I Am and with us. Thank you for your prayers. Thank you for your steadfast commitment to this ministry, to this organization. God bless you. both an, an offering envelope and some more information, and there's other envelopes back on the little table back there. Um, we'll be collecting for another few weeks, so um, this is over and above your normal giving, and, and uh, it goes directly to the World Fellowship or the World Mission Offering. So please pray about your, your part in that. Okay, uh, it's time for kids with Mark, Pastor Marty. Thank you. 
members of the family they live on this earth. Of us, this is the day. Get the whistle. This is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made. That the Lord has made. I will rejoice. I will rejoice and be glad in it. And be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in Him. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made. One more time. This is the day. Conflict going on between my mom told him and what the pastor told him he could. I think. <laughs> All right, it's time to uh, take up our offering this morning. So, if our ushers would prepare for this morning's offering. Father, we thank you for, once again, for bringing us together, for, uh, for giving us the blessings that we can give back, uh, just a portion of them to you. Father, we ask that you bless this offering, that you bless each gift, each giver, and that we be, be good stewards of all that you have given us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, uh, turn in your hymnals to number 469, Higher Ground, or the words are on the screen.
Father, we are so grateful that we can come to you, not just on a Sunday morning as we gather here together, but that we can come to you anytime, anywhere, any place, in the midst of anything in our lives. Father, we just pray special blessing upon each of these people mentioned this morning that you with Marty and, and his wife as they travel to see Susan and just uh, be with be with her and be with be with them in their journey. <clears throat> and Father be with special blessing on Steve and Vicky. They struggle once again with with a, a diagnosis that they just can't seem to control on their own. That just something that we have to put in your hands and and Father, we just pray uh, that your will might be done through through them and through their doctors and just uh, guide them and direct them in all the decisions that they, that they have ahead of them. We pray for the healing, uh, healings that have come, and, and but we know that that's not always going to happen for us. And we just, just ask that you uh, be with us, that you guide us as we struggle through life's ups and downs. Father, guide us, and we, th we thank you for your protection of Helen and in her fall, and just watch over us, Father, and we just are grateful that you are with us through everyday life and through all that we go through. And so just watch over us and, and care for us and help us to remember to call out to you, not just not just when we are hurting or not just when we when we feel we need you, but every day when, when you bless us, let us call your name. Troubles come our way, let us call your name. Father, just let us know your presence in our lives. Guide us and direct us and may the Holy Spirit descend upon us this morning as we worship together. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Good morning. Thank you, Debbie. Um, so many challenges that we face, aren't there, in life. Um, sometimes it seems like life is sort of a uh, process of two steps forward, one step back, and then sometimes one step forward and two steps back. And I, I, my, my heart goes out to Steve and Vicki as they just, uh, this has been a long, I know, ordeal for them as it has been for uh, uh, Bennett Spangler's family. So we, just, and all of us can probably point to different situations in our own, if not our immediate families, at least in our extended families where there's challenges we face that were just uh, seem overwhelming to us. But uh, all the more reason to, to realize that we are in God's care. We are not left to our own devices. We're not just uh, thrown out on our own in this world. We have a loving God who has sent his only beloved son, Jesus Christ, not only to redeem us from hell and death, giving us eternal life in heaven in the future, but we have hope now because we have Christ in us. He is the hope of glory who resides in us by grace through faith in him. Uh, I'm going to continue just uh, the passage in Philippians chapter 3 that I, I began last week. We looked at the first several verses of chapter 3, and I'm going to try to keep my remarks uh, a little bit shorter just to allow time for our uh, business meeting that will be immediately following the service. But if you uh, have your Bibles and you'd like to turn with me to Philippians chapter 3, otherwise uh, uh, Steve has the verses there also on the screen this morning. Um, we're going to pick up where we left off last week. Last week uh, we, we talked about the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus as our Lord and Savior. And uh, I'm going to continue Paul's thought as he continues to talk about his his faith in Christ and his hope and also his, his purpose in continuing to live on, on the earth as a servant of Christ. We're going to talk about the upward call of God in Christ that he refers to. So I'd like to spend just a few moments uh, with you sharing some thoughts on how to answer the upward call of God in Jesus Christ. Um, I'll read the verses and then we'll, we'll talk about them a little bit. So I'm beginning to read uh, Philippians chapter 3, verse 12. We, we got through uh, verse 11 last Sunday, but that verse 12, he says, Not that I have already obtained this 
And he's talking about attaining to the resurrection of the dead by his uh, faith in Christ. But he says, not that I have already obtained this or I'm already perfect, but I press on to make it my own because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Brothers, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Let those of us who are mature think this way, and if in anything you think otherwise, God will reveal that also to you. Only let us hold true to what we have attained. Father in heaven, I thank you for your word. Thank you for the hope that it gives us. Thank you for the encouragement that we receive because you have given us your word not only to uh, tell us the do's and the don'ts of life, but to give us encouragement in knowing that we have something to look forward to each day that you have made and in the eternity that you have prepared for us through the grace of your son, Jesus. For we ask these things in his name. Amen. The upward call of God in Jesus Christ, nothing can be more important to us than the relationship that we have with Jesus Christ day by day. When I think about that day by day, I thought of that old song, remember, remember God's Spell? Uh, the, the musical came out in the early 70s, around the same time as Jesus Christ Superstar, I think. Uh, but there was, a, back in that early 70s, there, I think a lot of it having to do with the Jesus movement. You had the, the musical Jesus Christ Superstar, but then this other one was called God's Spell, and it was a uh, takeoff, I believe, if I remember right, Mike started a study this morning on the Gospel of Mark, and I think the Godspell musical was based on the Gospel of Mark, if I'm not mistaken. But there was a song from that musical that made it onto the radio and got uh, quite a bit of radio play, and the song was called Day by Day. Remember that song? Day by Here's, here's the lyrics to the, to the main part of the song, and it's really actually a prayer and a pretty good one. It says, Day by day, day by day, O dear Lord, three things I pray to see thee more clearly, love thee more dearly, follow thee more nearly, day by day. That's a pretty good prayer, isn't it? To see thee more clearly, to see Christ, to see God in our lives more clearly, to love God more dearly, and to follow him more nearly, day by day. So following Paul's lead, what are some of the ways that we can answer the upward call of God in Christ Jesus our Lord? First of all, I think we need to acknowledge and realize, and I don't think it's too much of a hard sell, that we have not arrived. Anybody feel like you've already <laughs> reached perfection? Paul, Paul knew he hadn't reached it. I'm, I don't think any of us here are, are laboring under the illusion that we've somehow arrived. But he says, not that I have already obtained this or am already perfect. Paul knew he hadn't reached the perfection for which he longed in his relationship with Christ. He sought to enter through that narrow door that Jesus referred to when the disciples asked him at one point, are there few that are going to be saved? The disciples wanted to know how many, how many are going to make it through the pearly gates, and Jesus said, strive to enter through the narrow door, for many, I tell you, will seek to enter and will not be able. So Paul thought, sought to stride through that narrow door. He ran his Christian race, as he says in, in the uh, letter to the Corinthians, exercising self-control in all things. In fact, I want to read uh, this, these verses to you from uh, 1 Corinthians 9 because it's sort of a parallel to what he's saying here in Philippians. And here's what he says to the Corinthians in that letter. He says, if I can find the right chapter. Here, here's what he says. This is 1 Corinthians 9, verses 24 to 27. Do you not know that in a race all the runners run, but only one receives the prize? So run that you may obtain it. Every athlete exercises self-control in all things. They do it to receive a perishable wreath, but we an imperishable. So I do not run aimlessly. I do not box as one beating the air, but I discipline my body and keep it under control, lest after preaching to others... I myself should be disqualified. In both of these passages, Corinthians and here in our, uh, our text in Philippians, Paul is alluding to uh, the Greek games that we still uh, know now as the Olympic games, but they started back uh, long before, uh, even before Paul's time. The Greeks were running these races, having these, these contests, and he says in Corinthians, only... 
they all run, but only one receives the prize. I guess in those days they didn't have the gold medal, the silver, and the bronze. <laughs> he says only one receives the prize. And so the, the, this, this allusion to those games is, is very uh, much uh, in Paul's mind as he's writing these words to the Philippians. So first of all, acknowledge that we haven't arrived. We're still running this race. And we don't know how far down the road the finish line is. It, it's closer for some of us than others. We don't know when we're uh, approaching it always. Secondly, if we're going to answer this upward call of God in Christ, we need to remember that Jesus Christ has made us his own. He says, I press on to make it my own because Christ Jesus has made me his own. So if you have received Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, and I believe most everyone here, maybe all of us have made that step. We've received Christ into our hearts and lives. We've confessed that he is Lord with our mouths. Paul says in Romans 10, 9 and 10, if we confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord, believe in our hearts that God has raised him from the dead, we will be saved. That's the assurance we have from God's word. So if we've made that confession of faith in Christ, we've trusted in our hearts that God's raised him from the dead, we have been born again by the Spirit of the Father and the Son, and now we belong to him. We sing that song, uh, now I belong to Jesus. Remember that song? Now I belong to him. Not for the span of time alone, but for eternity. I know my own, Jesus said in John 10, and my own know me. Thirdly, if we're going to continue on this upward call that God has made to us through Jesus Christ, we need to forget what lies behind, what has already been, and what cannot be changed. Paul writes, brothers, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind. And I'll stop there and think about that for just a few minutes. Paul's not talking about some sort of self-inflicted amnesia. He's not saying, I've forgotten everything behind. I can't remember, like, unfortunately, my sister-in-law, Susan, she, She's forgotten what's behind, but not in a good way. She has lost her memory, as so many people have that have succumbed to uh, various kinds of uh, dementia. In fact, I was just, uh, Barb was looking on her phone yesterday. She always gives me the latest Google updates over coffee in the morning, whether I want to know or not. And uh, she, she said, Bruce, Bruce Willis, uh, the actor who has, uh, does not have Alzheimer's, but he has, what do you, you know what it is? Uh, I think it's, it's temporal, front temporal, temporal lobe, something or other. Yeah, and now he can no longer speak is what was the latest news on Bruce Willis. And so uh, uh, Paul is not talking about not being able to remember when he says forgetting what is behind or forgetting what lies behind. In fact, we know very well that Paul remembers because just earlier in chapter 3, he says, talking about being a Hebrew of Hebrews, by the law of Pharisee, a persecutor of the church, Paul remembered very well his past. It's not a matter of forgetting our past. It's a matter of not letting the past control us. It's, it's a matter of not dwelling in an unhealthy way on the past. And I think there's a tendency for us uh, older folks, as we get older, as we continue to grow older and older, <laughs> to have more and more memories of the past that kind of come back to us. That's not necessarily a bad thing unless we get stuck there and we can't enjoy the present because we're thinking how much better life used to be in the good old days. You know, have you reached the good old days phase of life yet? I have. It's like, <laughs> now I'm always complaining everything that changes. I think, oh, back in the good old days, you know, we didn't have to worry about, we'd have to carry a cell phone around and get called 24-7. Forgetting what lies behind doesn't mean forgetting. It means not letting it control us, not letting the past control our present life of faith and every other aspect of our lives. Paul realized that if Jesus had hold of him in the present, then he could gladly let go of the past, the good, the bad, and the ugly, so that his energies could be better spent on the present. And that's good advice for all of us as we continue uh, on this upward call of God in Christ. Then next, if we're going to continue the upward call, we need to press on toward the goal, the prize, what God the Father calls us to in our Lord and Savior Jesus. Paul says, straining forward, forgetting what lies behind, 
and straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. This upward call of God in Christ calls us away from the problems of the present life, and there's plenty of them. It, it's a call to remember that in spite of all that we're facing in this world, and we face a lot, that there is something better awaiting us. We can look forward to a time when there won't be Alzheimer's disease, there won't be cancer, there won't be babies on ventilators. We will enter into the new heavens and the new earth that is, even as we speak, being prepared for us by our loving Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus. And again, Paul has these games in mind. When he, and The writer to the Hebrews says, looking unto Jesus, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the prize that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is now sat down at the right hand of God. And we need to also keep our eyes focused on Jesus as we remain on this upward call of God in Christ. What lies ahead? Forgetting what lies behind and pressing on to what lies ahead. <clears throat> What does lie ahead, I wonder, for us? Ever stop and think about that? What's around the next corner? <laughs> it's easy to sometimes fixate on our fears for the future. You know, Helen, you fall, and you, this time you bruise your chin, you think, will the next fall land me in the hospital with a broken hip? That's always a concern for us as we get older. What, what, what's the next catastrophe that's going to happen to us? Paul says, what lies ahead is not just the things that happen in this world that we fear. What lies ahead are the things that are certain and secure for us by grace through faith in Jesus Christ. But we really don't know, do we, what lies ahead. We have our hopes, we have our dreams, and yes, we have our fears about the day, tomorrow, the future. But since we don't even know what tomorrow may bring, we're wise, aren't we, to put our trust and our faith in Jesus Christ for this day. Instead of worrying about the next Trouble, the next problem. I like that old song that Iris Stanfield wrote, and it's in our hymn book here too. Uh, um, he says, I don't know about tomorrow. I just live from day to day. I don't borrow from its sunshine, for its skies may turn to gray. I don't worry o'er the future, for I know what Jesus said, and today I'll walk beside him, for he knows. He knows what is it. Then the chorus says, Many things about tomorrow I don't seem to understand. But I know who holds tomorrow, and I know who holds my good, good thing for us to remember. Finally, if we're going to answer the upward call of God in Christ, we need to hold true to what we have attained so far. Paul says, let those of us who are mature, who are growing in our faith in Christ, in other words, think this way. And if in anything you think otherwise, God will reveal that also to you. And then he concludes by saying, only let us hold true to what we have attained. It adds, so far. Let us hold true to what we have attained. Where am I in my faith journey right now? Where are you in your walk with the Lord? What have I been able to attain so far as a result of my time spent with the Lord in my Christian walk through Scripture and prayer? I think of Scripture and prayer as the, the, the main two uh, means of grace for me. Through Scripture, I get to hear God speak to me. Through prayer, I get to communicate back to God and to hear from God in prayer as well. But what have I got to show for it? Holding true to what we have attained so far means not falling back into old doubts, old fears, old sins, old habits, old things that used to cripple our lives. When we reach a point of, of the Lord setting us free from whatever it might be, Paul is saying, what if, you've, if you've reached that point of maturity, don't fall back. He says, hold true to what you have attained. That's, that's his advice. Well, I don't know all that this upward call of God in Christ will include for you or for me, but I don't want any one of us to fall short of it. I know I haven't arrived, so I keep in mind that Jesus has made me his own, that I do well to forget what has been, at least not to let it control my life, whether successes or failures, so I can focus on what is and what 
lies ahead as I press on toward the goal. Not my own goals, hopes, or dreams. And there's nothing wrong with us having our own goals, our own dreams. I hope we do have goals and hopes and dreams. But more importantly, I hope that we remain mindful of God's goal for us, his upward call in Christ Jesus our Lord, because that's, that is the goal that's going to last for eternity. So let us realize what, that what God has in store for us far exceeds even the best things that we can dream of, that we can ask or even think. I'll conclude with this uh, benediction from Jude. This is the last two verses of the book of Jude, the brother of Jesus. Now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you blameless before the presence of his glory with great joy, to the only God, our Savior, through Jesus Christ our Lord, be glory, majesty, dominion, and authority before all time and now and forevermore. Amen. Let's uh, stand and sing in closing the hymn, uh, hymn number 400, Have Thine Own Way, Lord. thank you for your upward call, Father, to us in Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. And I pray that you will fill us with your Holy Spirit so that we may answer that upward call that you present to each one of us who come to faith in Christ. I pray for each one of us here this morning, for those who are part of this congregation, that you will just help each one of us to answer the upward call according to your will and your purpose for each one of us and for all of us together, for we ask these things in Jesus' name. We also ask for your blessing on the meeting to follow uh, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Well, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Amen.